So today I'm going to be showing you all the components of the CQRS. The reason is because for many, the CQRS architecture has been a bit difficult to understand. The reason is that the, the CQRS is made up of several components. But if you understand how these components interact and how they relate, how they share data, then it's going to be easy for you. I'm also going to be showing you a complete CQRS application and how all these components are arranged in different packages and how they communicate. So I've made it very easy. So if you look at the description box, you'll find link to this place. So you can see all the components and you'll be able to appreciate how they correlate. So the best thing we can do, the easiest thing to do to understand how CQRS works is to look at the basic uh, um, three, three layer architecture. That is the normal application that we built before now that is not CQRS. So normally we have a HTTP request response. Uh, before I continue, I'd like to remind you, if you are joining for the first time, please subscribe by hitting the subscribe button. If you also have any challenges, please uh, let me know in the uh, comment box below and I'll respond to you as much as I can. So basically we have, before now, we normally have a, uh, a HTTP request. So this HTTP request is made in an application and it gets into the controller so on, once it gets into the controller, and that request is going to go to the next layer, which is called the service, either the service or the business service layer, okay? So from here, this request is going to be routed down to an interface called the repository. So basically, all these are simply files, controller.java, service.java, repository.java. So it's very, it's very easy to, to understand this three-layer architecture. And from this repository, it's easily going to get into the, the database and then pull data across from the database. So it's going to simply reverse direction. And now what is going back here is the response, is the HTTP response. Forgive me the, my writing. So this is how a uh, normal request response works in, in a in conventional app application. Now, what of CQRS? Now, here we have only four components, but in CQRS, there's a whole lot of components. Now, let's look at this, this same process now in case of CQRS. Again, we, we have the controller. So let's say we have the controller. This is our controller. And a request for data comes in. Uh, let me just call this controller. Okay, so now whatever is coming into the controller is either a query or a request, okay? In this case, everything is a request. It could either be post, it could either be put, it could either be get. Now, all this is about the conventional application. In case of uh, CQRS, it can either be a request, sorry, it can either be a, a query, uh, a command, or a query. So let's say the query comes in here. So let's start with the first one. Let's assume what is coming in is a command. So make no mistake about it. A command simply corresponds to Either a post, a put, or a delete. A command is something that changes the data in the data store. Okay, so when this comes from the controller, it's going to go down. Now the first item is going to encounter is something called the command gateway. Of course, it's going to meet the controller endpoint, which is controller endpoints are defined here, simply the function that runs. So meanwhile, from that place, it is now going to meet something called the command gateway okay let's call it cgw at this point the command gateway will receive this command and then route it into the command boss to the command handler so now the next place is going to go down now it have the command boss okay command boss is simply like a channel it's going to go to the command handler so let's just call it ch after I'm going to go to this side so that I'm going to show you around in how all this corresponds here. So you're going to go from the command gateway to the command handler, okay? 
when this command handler uh, gets these commands, it's going to handle it, and when it handles it, it's going to emit an event. So let's say it emits an event at this point. So this is events emitted. Meanwhile, when this command is handled, an event sourcing occurs. So let's say an event sourcing is simply something that saves this command or makes this change in the database. So let's call this event sourcing handler. Event sourcing handler will simply take that command and effect the change in the in the DB. So let's call this write DB. Now the interesting thing about CQRS is that the, the databases are different. The, the read database is different from the write database. Now this command effects in the write database and at the command handler an event is emitted that is handled by an event handler. Okay. Event handler. Once this event handler handles this event, it's going to then save this data in the right database. Okay? In the read database. So what is being saved in this database here is called aggregates. And what is saved here is just normal, uh, let's call it entities. Okay, now what's the difference? Now I'm not going to spend more time to explain, but they are about the same thing except the way they are stored is different. An aggregate represents a series of changes that are put together uh, and stored in a consistent state in a storage. While entity is a normal record that we store like in relational tables in our database. So when a query comes, the query is going to so at this point the command is complete. The command is updated in the aggregate, events is emitted, is handled by an event handler. Of course, it goes through the repository here and save the changes. Same changes are also saved in the read database. So when a query is coming, a query is coming into the read database. When a query comes in, it's going to hit something called uh, the query gateway, QGW the query gateway okay when it hits the query gateway it's going to be routed through the query bus to the query handler q h and the query handler simply will go to the uh, to the read database fetch the data and send it back up so now you understand why it is called command query responsibility segregation so this is basically how the two architectures differ so let me now go over to this section. Let me just explain a bit of this to you. So here we have uh, three different component classes I've mentioned. One of them is the command or API component. We have the query components and we have the event, uh, the common components. The command components have to do with handling commands. It includes the, the aggregates, which is stored. We have the uh, event sourcing handler. We also have the command handler. We have commands we have also events which are emitted by handling a command the queries include the queries themselves the the read model which is the read at the entities we have the query handler the read repositories they are all related to, to the query we also have a common component simply includes the the gateways the gateways command gateway the query gateway and the event gateway and we also have the bosses we have the command endpoints so all these have to do with both commands and queries. Now we've said that command have to do with uh, something that changes your data, for instance, puts, deletes, or, or posts. A query has to do with something that fetches data, a request made to get some data, okay? Now the question is, what of events? Because this is something that has been asked before. What then of events? Now. Events are a special kind of message that is emitted when a command happens. And that's why a CQRS architecture is called an EDA, Event Driven Architecture. So events are internal uh, messages that are emitted when something happens to make the architecture or the system consistent. 
So for instance, you've seen that when a command is handled at this point, an event is emitted to tell the other database that it has to uh, make its data set or its data store consistent, okay? So I'm going to stop here. Hopefully this makes some sense to you. Now, uh, since I have a little time, I'm not going to take time to explain the application because this is what we've been talking about. I'm going to explain this architecture uh, this complete application in another video. So you can see the definition of the commands, how they are defined, how the queries are defined, uh, how the, you can see the queries here, you can see the repositories, and you can see the read model and the write model. So I'm going to take time to explain this to you and show you how all these components we talked about are represented in actual Java files or in actual application source codes. So I'm going to stop here. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Please remember to subscribe to my channel. I remain kind on the Tech Pro and I'm always here to, to help you understand whatever is difficult for you. Remember to leave a comment if you have any challenge and I'm going to try to respond to you if I can.